another Sunday School Short. Today we're in Acts 9 and 10, walking through the New Testament chronologically as it happened, as it was written. Like, subscribe, and share if this is a blessing to you. This is just a small synopsis of my time in God's Word. You get into God's Word, become a daily Bible reader. I'm just your encourager. This is uh, Saul's conversion. Uh, Saul was, co so was uttering threats every day uh, with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. He went to the high priest requesting letters addressed to the synagogue in Damascus, asking for them to cooperate in the, the arrest of followers of the way. And that was followers of Jesus, this new belief system of Jesus' life, death, resurrection here. As approaching Damascus, a light from heaven fell, uh, light from heaven came, and Paul fell to the ground. A voice was saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul says, who are you, Lord? The voice says, I am Jesus, the one you're persecuting. He stood up. After that, he was blind. The men with him led him to the mass. They had heard rumblings, but they didn't actually hear what was said. Paul, or Saul, was blind for three days. And the Lord spoke to this guy, Ananias. Again, this is a lot. I'm, I'm cramming a lot in here, so don't neglect the reading. I can only hit the high points. Uh, the Lord spoke to a guy named Ananias, who was a believer. He said, go to Straight Street. Ask for Saul of Tarsus. Lay hands on him so that he may see again. And Ananias said to Jesus, said, I have heard talk of the terrible things this man has done. And the Lord says, go, for Saul is my instrument to take the message to the Gentiles and to the kings, as well as the people of Israel. And Ananias went and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus has sent me so that you can regain sight. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell from his eyes. He regained his sight. He was baptized. He ate food. And he stayed there with believers for several days. A few days later, he immediately began preaching about Jesus in the synagogues. All who heard him were amazed. Verse, the last part of 21, isn't this the same man who caused such devastation among the Jesus followers in Jerusalem? His preaching became more and more powerful. The Jews at that point, the, the Orthodox Jews, the, main, the people that weren't converted to Christianity, the Jews plotted to kill him. Uh, Paul was told about this. Saul at the time was told about this, about their plot. Some believers lowered him in a large basket in an opening in the city wall. When he was in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with the believers, but they were scared to meet with him. They, they, the word hadn't got back to them yet. Barnabas knew about this. Barnabas brought him to the apostles, to the apostles, and told them the whole story about the road to Damascus, his conversion story. And it's great if you have that conversion story that that you can pinpoint a date and a time when God spoke to you. Um, that is amazing. Uh, his preaching uh, in Damascus and on and on about that. He began preaching in Jerusalem. He debated some Jewish speak or some Greek speaking Jews, but they tried to murder him. The believers sent him back home to Tarsus, which was where he was from. Verses 32 through 43, we're switching gears here to Peter. He was in the area of Joppa and Lydia, or Lydda, which you can see there on the map there. Um, he healed a man that had been bedridden for eight years. He says, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up, take up your sleeping, sleeping mat. In Joppa, in Joppa, a lady named Tabitha died. Believers heard Peter was in nearby Lydda and sent for him. He did, and he came there. And he sent the people out of the room where Tabitha was, turned to Tabitha, and prayed, Get up, Tabitha, and she opened her eyes, verse 40 says. The news spread throughout the whole town, and many believed in the Lord. Acts 10, we're in, now in Caesarea. He moves on to Caesarea, which was a coastal town. He lived there. Uh, there lived a Roman officer there named Cornelius. He was a devout, God-fearing man. Um, and this is like people in our lives that may say, Hey, I believe in God, but I don't necessarily believe in Jesus. Or, or they just say, I don't know, you know about that. This is where these people were. And we're going to talk about this in other people. In um, Lydia, in, in Acts 16, talks about this. She was a believer in God. But she didn't know the saving power of Jesus Christ. And that's where Peter is taking 
this message. He was a devoted, God-fearing man, um, as was his entire household. He saw an angel. Your prayers and gifts to the poor have uh, been received by God as an offering. Now send a man to Joppa, Joppa and summon Peter. The next day, Peter went up on the rooftop to pray. He was in Joppa. And about high noon, he was hungry. He fell into a trance. He saw, in verse 11, it says he, he saw the sky open and something like a sheet, large sheet was let down on the four corners. In the sheet were all types of animals, reptiles, and birds. The voice said, get up, kill, and eat them. No, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure or unclean. The voice said to him, don't call anything unclean that, the, that God has made clean. And the vision was repeated three times. See, there were no exclamation points or no uh, in Hebrew and Greek. So things are often repeated. You'll see words repeated in the ancient text where holy, 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 kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. It's just emphasis on that um, versus like we have the exclamation point in our uh, English writing. So the Holy Spirit says to Peter, go with them without hesitation and he said that three times. Uh, at the same time, the three men arrived that Cornelius had sent well, after he had had this vision. And the Holy Spirit said, hey, go with these men without hesitation. The following day, they get up and go back to Cornelius' house. And um, his friends and relatives were there waiting on him when they arrived. Cornelius fell at Peter's feet and worshipped him. Peter said, hey, stand up. I'm just a human being just like you. And we've talked about this before. Jesus allowed himself to be worshipped because he was God. Angels have been trying to... Have people have tried to worship angels, Moses, Peter, John, and uh, we see that Paul, several places throughout Scripture, different people have been worshipped, and they've all said, get up, I'm just a regular guy, just like you. Um, but Jesus allowed himself to be worshipped because he was God. Peter says, by Jewish law, I can't enter this Gentile home, but God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure and clean. Now, why have you sent for me? Cornelius says, four days ago, I was praying, and an angel told me to send for you. Uh, now you're here, and we're waiting to hear what the Lord has, the message the Lord has given you. In verses 34 through 43, Peter says, I clearly see that God shows no favoritism. In 35, in every nation he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. Peter goes on to talk about Jesus' life, his death, his resurrection, about how he appeared to the apostles after his death and resurrection. He ate and drank with them, um, showing that he was indeed alive. Verse 43, He is the one that all the prophets testified about, that everyone who believes in him, that their sins will be forgiven in his name. As Peter spoke, the Holy Spirit fell upon the Gentiles. They were baptized in the name of Jesus. Don't neglect the reading. Like, subscribe, and share. God bless you.